Hello, we're Team 21, and this is our MECD2 transmission design project. I'm David Hilton, this is Carolyn Rendon, and Alfredo Mary. Okay, so for our problem statement, we had a uh, design a transmission unit that could take six horsepower, the input RPMs at 1120, output at 70. The input and output shafts had to be aligned and turning in the same direction. The smallest possible volume and weight is what we wanted out of this with very high precision applications and dear light shocks. Operate at room temperature. Also, cost is not a critical parameter for our design. Applications. So, a uh, transmission like the one we designed has already is already being used today, and it is basically applied to any uh, speed reducing transmission that when it is needed, since the, this would be also considered a transmission that would maximize torque. So, for this application. Um, Similar to these transmissions, they are they have already been used to facilitate and make people's lives easier. And some specific designs that this transmission is already being used is in water pump units, rain elevators, and handlers, and even aircraft manufacturing processes. The environmental impact, since this transmission was designed with uh, with solely like recyclable materials, this was already going green and kind of like a uh, good thing for the environment. Also, uh, while designing the transmission, noise that it would produce is, was also taken in consideration, and uh, the impact to the environment would then be a positive one, since it is more easier and more efficient manner to perform a task and, and for it to be accomplished. This alone, just the less work, will result in the conservation of energy, which is good for the environment. Okay, so to design this transmission, we went through three conceptual designs. This is our first where we designed the transmission using the smallest gears we could at each reduction. We had to use an even number of gear reductions because we needed the shaft to have the same input and output orientation. They both, we assume, rotated clockwise. Um, you'll notice here that our first design did not meet our, uh, one of our critical design parameters. The shafts were not aligned. So we decided to move on to our second, our second design iteration. Uh, this, what we did here to align the shafts, is for our uh, smallest gears we could use for our final design step, we used throughout the transmission. This caused the, uh, the radiuses to cancel each other out for the offsets and the shafts to align. We, looking at this, we figured that we could make this a little more efficient space-wise. This comes our third design iteration. Instead of having the shafts up and down and having all the shafts aligned with each other, causing it to take a lot of space, we staggered the shafts. This allowed us to shorten the shafts which had the side benefit of making them stronger and then also reduced the surface area. That's shown here. Between our first and third design iteration, we were actually able to reduce the surface area by a little over half. And even from the second to third, we reduced it by about 100 square inches, which is a large amount of uh, area to reduce a transmission by. Okay, for our structural design, we're going to go through how we did our shaft design, gear selection, bearing selection, and the casing. Alfredo will go ahead our David will go ahead and talk about our shaft design. Okay, for the shaft design, what we did was we found all the critical, all the forces and torques applied to the shaft. Um, what, the, what we did was then we found the maximum moments and torques applied to each shaft and we designed our step shaft around that. Then once we knew all of our critical points, we decided what the diameter had to be each one and we made sure we had a factor of safety of two at each one of these design uh, points. Uh, this allowed us to use 1045 CD steel, and when we ran the deflection analysis on this, everything was within acceptable parameters. For gear selection, at the beginning of one of our designs, we had chosen the helical gears, since pre precision was uh, one of the key factors for our design, and notice that they wouldn't take the loads uh, that we had to apply to them. So we ended up having to choose spur gears, and we did, uh, we did this by following AMA procedures and for both the bending stress and contact stress for both the end pinion and the gears. And we, since we had to do four reductions uh, throughout the 1120 to 70 RPMs, we ended up using gears of 84 teeth and pinions 42 teeth throughout four times that made the reduction. Once the gears and the shafts were done, then we were able to move on to uh, choose our bearings. We went with cylindrical bearings for our final design. Uh, they were pretty easy because it only had a radial load. We had no thrust load in this application and we chose our Timken bearings. Um, we had our, our part numbers for, for our larger one and our smaller ones. 
and then now the cost analysis. We had six bearings um, at 70 bucks a piece, and then we had about four bearings at $63, and our four gears, the 84 tooth gears, about 335. Our pinions were 185, we had five shafts at 1164, where our total cost of about $2,800. So today's machines, they use many fluids, many oils to be maintained, uh, but a gearbox requires some special things that other machines might not need. Due to uh, the gear movement inside, a, a, a gearbox oil would have some kind of foaming. This foaming has air, which in a way is compressible, so when gears, at, um, they attack each other with this foam, they, you know, you need an additive basically to prevent foam, you need an additive to prevent rust, you need an additive that is high uh, resistant to pressures that you feel in between gears. So basically that is what we designed our transmitter to be. It is designed to with a, with a half oil bath, what they call it, with the movement it will dissipate to all the gears themselves. Now. Uh, we have the casing was designed also for very easy maintenance uh, and servicing of the transmission since we have a uh, top cover that would come off and then um, we would have the, some bolts right here that would just remove and we can slide the shaft. We, we have uh, what they call bearing blocks and the bearing blocks once you remove them we can slide the shafts out very easy to service and then these inside would, you would not be able to get to because Unless you get the cost analysis, this would be very uh, determinate well, how the loads are will affect them down as well. So in conclusion, uh, we designed a transmission that would take six horsepower and reduce the RPMs from 1120 to 70 RPMs. It's a 61 to 1 reduction. Uh, our chosen application for this type of transmission would be for an elevator, which doesn't require a large amount of velocity, but does require a large lift capacity. This would allow uh, our transmission to basically, from our casing, where it's a, a square case, to be mounted easily on a building and then used for the elevator uh, transmission.